Okay, great. So thank you so much, Rajan, sir. And hi, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you from Olympiad Success Family. So students, as we were discussing earlier, so today we are here for a demo and interaction program for grade six science. And I'm sure like all of you would have appeared for uh, science Olympiad examination. Okay, so <coughs> basically these are level two classes in which we would be focusing on your revision and then uh, practice of questions. So these would be very tricky questions uh, which we would be focusing on and uh, making sure that uh, we cover up all the things like all types of questions which uh, <coughs> come into your level two examinations. Okay, so the flow of this session would be like, first of all, there would be an introduction by your mentor. Anjali ma'am would be taking up your classes and then Rajan sir would be giving you a brief uh, introduction about the course okay so the course details would be there he would be covering up those and then i will be taking you through the tour of the dashboard olympiad success dashboard wherein you can access the reading material practice questions and answer keys and after that we'll be having a short question and answer out so you can ask us uh, any questions and we would be happy to answer post the qa and a q and a round we will be starting with the demo session for which you all are here okay all right, kids. So uh, over to Anjali, ma'am. Hi, Anjali, ma'am. How are you? Hello, ma'am. I'm fine. What about you? Yeah, good too, ma'am. So and uh, Anjali, ma'am, I'm sure kids like uh, you're going to enjoy her classes. So Anjali, ma'am, mm -hmm. has been associated with Olympiad Success for quite a while. And uh, uh, Anjali, ma'am, why don't you provide a brief introduction about yourself? So, yeah. Hello, everyone. So my name is Anjali Joy, and I have been teaching physics, chemistry and maths up to class uh, eight and physics and chemistry, basically for classes nine and 10. And for Olympiad, I have taken science batches for grade six accelerated batch. OK, so I have already completed that course there. So this is level two course, as ma'am has already discussed it with you. So here we'll be having a quick revision of each lesson. Like, uh, for example, we are taking light chapter. So one class or one session will include the introduction production and all the concept clear, clear clarity is already given to you all the basic con concepts we'll discuss in the class and the next session we'll be discussing what are the important questions which were asked in previous year olympiad exams and uh, previous year uh, exam examination papers and also we'll be discussing that so basically in 20 sessions or 20 classes we'll finish off the revision once again the quick revision of almost all the topic of the syllabus which you have in grade six Okay, so uh, shall I start with the demo, ma'am? Yeah, just a moment. Like we will be first uh, giving a presentation and okay. then, then okay. okay. So thank you so much, uh, Anjali, ma'am. And now, kids, I would like to uh, request Rajan sir to uh, give a quick presentation no, about this course. Let me share my screen. So welcome, students. Welcome to the demo interaction program for class six science. This course is for level two. So firstly, let me tell you about us, about Olympiad Success. So Olympiad Success is India's largest online tuition platform for Olympiad exams. We have Olympiad Live classes and we also have School Plus program. So in School Plus program, we offer eight courses that are Mathematics, English, Science, Logical Reasoning, Communication. In communication spoken and written both Vedic Maths and Coding. What else? We also offer online CBC Plus Olympiad classes for grade 6 to 10 and one-on-one -on -one classes for International Mathematics Olympiad like SESMO, CMO, HKMO, TIMO, Math Count, PS Math Competition, Math Kangaroo, and PRMO. Now meet the rank holder for session 21-22. So many students in Olympic success got international ranks in different different Olympic exams. Okay. Now students about this course. So there will be around 20 students in the class, and the classes will be conducted on Zoom platform only. So there will be four sessions per week. Days are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. The class timing is 5 to 6 15 p.m. Okay. So what we're going to do in this course, uh, like we'll have topic wise quick revision of each and every chapter. And after that, we will discuss questions, previous year level two questions. Okay. And students, you will get reading material and practice question, which is available on the dashboard of Olympiad Success. And with this course, you will also get free access to the Olympiad Success platform for uh, practicing level two worksheet. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rajan. So yeah, you can continue. No please. problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now this is the syllabus link. I will share within the chat uh, box. I think so. The screen is not visible. Okay, let me share again. Yeah. 
visible now ma'am okay so uh, students uh, where i am so i'm just telling you like the days the days for this course are monday tuesday thursday and friday and the class timing is 5 to 6 15 pm now uh, like we are going to do in this course we will discuss like topic wise quick revision we will have a topic wise quick revision of each and every chapter and after that we will discuss like previous year level 2 questions and you will get reading material and practice question that is available on the dashboard of olympiad success and you will also get a like level 2 mock test for practicing now the syllabus link I will share you in the chat box. The fees for this course is 4,500 and there will be 20 session in this course. We include online classes, daily reading notes and exercises, practice of this year level two questions. Like I said, you will get access to the Olympiad success platform, science reading material and level two mock test, okay? Now students like uh, we will refund the fee after deduction of 10% in case if you are not qualified for level two exam, okay? It is only valid uh, if you share your role number with us. Now to join this course, what you need, you need a laptop with good internet speed. And so as you already prepared in level one exam, you know, uh, you need to like give the time to uh, for the Olympiad. Okay. So for level two also, you need to spend approx two, three hours every day to cover with the curriculum and solving the concepts. Okay. For the live classes for this course, we are going to start from 2nd of January. And currently we are having students from 3800 school and we are catering in 35 plus countries. So this is about uh, this course today. Now Artima will give you a tour of Olympiad success dashboard. And after that, if anyone have any query, any doubt, we will take that. So what do you Artima? Yeah, thank you so much Rajan sir. And uh, I'll just quickly share my screen. Rajan sir, if you can make me the co-host. Yeah, sure ma'am. You can share now. Thank you. Yeah, so students, what would happen is like once you enroll to this course, uh, you have you would be getting your credentials, that is your email and password, using yeah, which uh, you can log in here. So you have to enter your credentials, email and password, and click on the sign in button. So as soon as you click on the sign in button, you will be redirected to the profile page and you make sure that you complete the profile before you can move to any other section on the dashboard. So the first important part over here is live classes wherein you can access the content. So you have to just click on the subject, select the topic and then the reading material, uh, then practice questions and the answer keys would be displayed for that particular topic. What you have to do is just click on the links available. So let's say I click on the link of reading material. Uh, the reading material of that particular topic will open up so you can go through this and then to practice you have to click on this and the practice questions would be coming up and then finally once you mark down your answers you can match your answers with the answer key given over here so this is the answer key now the next thing is the schedule part so you would be having 20 sessions in this entire course so all the 20 sessions have been clearly structured so like you would know what would be happening in which session so in session one we'd be taking up food and it's one in session two would be test and discussion so on and so forth it would be uh, done right then we have the holiday calendar wherein, wherein we have mentioned the dates like uh, on which they classes will not be conducted and finally we have this meeting id and password where your meeting id and password will be displayed the next important thing is the worksheet so you would be getting access to level two worksheets uh, so these would be mock tests so set of 10 mock tests will be available to you okay so as you notice over here there are 10 mock tests available to you for your practice you have to just click on the take exam button to take these tests and to see your answer key you have to just go to the performance tab select your subject and then click on the view button to view your answer keys. So that is all about the platform. And now we can take up the uh, queries. So Aviraj had one query, um, I have one doubt. So Aviraj, you can type in your query and uh, we would be happy to answer. And meanwhile, all right, it's clear. That's great. And anybody else having any other query? You can write it down in the chat section. Do anyone have any doubt, any question, you can write in the chat box.
everything is clear to everyone okay then uh, let, let me ask some questions to you so can you tell me the days the days we are having the classes you can write in the chat box you have to respond monday tuesday thursday and friday yes correct days are monday tuesday thursday and friday and what are the class timing Five to six fifteen. Five to six twenty. Okay. Any other answer? Five to six fifteen. Yes, it is correct. It is five to six fifteen, but it is five to six fifteen p.m. Okay. You need to write it also. Okay. Uh, and how many sessions will be there in this course? Twenty. Twenty. Correct. Correct. Okay. Do anyone have any doubt, any query, or shall we begin with the session? Okay. Okay, Artimam, I think we can start with the session. Yes, absolutely. So over to you, Anjali, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Arti Ma'am, and thank you, Rajan Sir. Okay. Hello, everyone. Drubin, Aviraj, Kirti, Badra, Biju, Ritu Raj, Nivan, Mahesh. Okay, fine. So, Aviraj, I gave a little bit introduction. So, what do you, what did you understand? That what are we going to do in this uh, level two batch? Did you understand anything, or did you get any idea about what are we actually going to do? Yes, Aviraj. Anyone? Kirti? Uh, Aviraj, you can unmute yourself and uh, give the answer. Okay, we are going to study about habit. Correct. So already you know the basic level or you know some of the concepts regarding the chapter, right? So you will be once again revising the same topic on one day and the other day you will be writing the test, right? So this is what we are actually going to do in this session, okay? So let me start with the demo session. First, I'll just share the screen with you. Is my screen visible to you, Rajan sir? Is it? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay. So for today's topic, I have taken electricity and circuits, right? Uh, so many of you may not know, may, may be knowing about electricity and circuits, right? So any idea, Kirti? What did you learn in this chapter? Or Dhruvin, anyone can answer or you can type in chat box as well. Okay. In electricity and circuits, did you learn something about the charges? Any idea? How many types of charges we have? Dhruvin? Okay. So there are two types of charges, positive and negative charges. You might have studied structure of atom, right? Matter consists of atoms and in atoms we have mainly, yes, positive and negative. Very good. Uh, so positive and negative charges, right? Ma'am, you can on the slide slideshow. It is not yes. on. It's not visible. There are no. two types of charges. It's no, only not... first slide is visible up to now. Okay, fine. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll share once again. Is it now? Yes, yes, now it's visible, ma'am. Okay, fine. So as Aviraj has already typed the answer in the chat box, there are two types of charges, basically positive and negative charges. And the moment of electrons, which are negative charges, that causes rise to electricity, okay? But the charges which you see in this figure, like you can see a road and a silk cloth, ebonite road and a silk cloth is there, and there are positive and negative charges in that. They are known as static charges. So charges are again divided into two types. One is static charges, which are charges which are at rest. And the other one is the charges which are in motion. And we know only electrons in the atom can move. Protons are fixed inside the nucleus. So electricity is basically about charges in motion. And it is due to electrons only. 
okay and the properties of charges any idea about like charges like positive and positive they will repel each other have you learned about it kirti no ma'am okay yes okay so this is just a information about charges okay so like charges are positive and positive charges are there they will repel each other repel means they will move away from each other and if you bring two opposite charges one positive and one negative charge they will attract each other that means they will come closer to each other okay and only due to electron motion we are getting current electricity so electricity which is moving or which you are obtaining from the transmission wires and all that is due to movement of electrons and that is called as current electricity here this is a property of charges so both the charges have different properties one is positive and one is negative okay yes any idea about electric current yes aviraj you are correct they are like magnets like in magnets north and north pole that will repel each other and north and south pole will attract each other in the same manner okay fine so you learned about electric current now now i told you electric current means the charges in motion the charges in movement and that is only due to electrons so what happens for example if you connect a battery or a terminal with a bulb okay so this battery or this uh, two terminals of the battery will have one is positive and one is negative higher terminal and one is negative lower terminal of the battery so what happens when you switch on or when you complete the circuit the bulb or the device connected with the battery glows right so that means there is a electric current through it and what is the reason of that electric current the orderly motion of electrons as i already said protons do not give rise to electricity or current electricity only electrons are there because electrons can only move inside the atom okay so when you connect a battery it has a positive and a negative terminal all the electrons now what is the charge of electron do you remember anyone aviraj dhruvin anyone do you remember the charge on electron negative charge okay so what happens negative charge from the battery or from the wire negative side of the battery inside the wire the negative charge will move from the c here this is the negative terminal from here electrons will move towards the positive terminal of the battery c this is the direction of electron flow yes negative very good very good bhadra bijunayar okay so this is the direction of electron okay but the direction of current so there are actually two directions one is the actual movement of electrons inside the wire the movement of electrons is from negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal okay but the direction of current in the electric circuit is taken as positive to negative okay so there are two directions actually conventional direction because that time when electrical circuits and all were prepared they didn't know about the electrons protons and neutrons so they gave the direction of current from positive to negative terminal because like water flows from a higher potential to lower potential in the same manner they said current also flows from positive to negative but later on when electrons were discovered they found out that the electrons are actual the reason of flow of current so electrons are moving from negative to positive so this thing you have to remember okay dhruvin did you get an idea so two directions are there conventional direction is from positive to negative okay and the uh, actual direction of flow of current is negative to positive kirti yes aviraj anyone is having any doubt till here and this is the formula no. of electric current okay this is the formula so this is a symbol i is the symbol for electric current q is the symbol for charge now the charge here is only we are talking about negative charges okay we are only talking about electrons or negative charges charges per unit time so how many charges are flowing in a unit time that means the number of charges flowing per unit time will give us the amount of electric current and ampere is the si unit of current like how length is measured in meters right distance is measured in meter or kilometer in the same way current is measured in amperes and charges are measured in coulomb and time is measured in seconds so time you know no seconds minutes and hours but the standard unit we are following for time is seconds so 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second okay up to here is it clear okay so actual flow anyone is having any doubt 
So actual flow of current is due to the electrons which are from negative to positive terminal and the direction of electric current is taken from positive to negative. Okay, and formula for current is I equals to Q upon T. Fine. Let us move on to the next slide. Okay, now electric cell, you know that is the basic device which we are using and which converts the chemical energy into electrical energy, right? So this is a device which you have seen already at your home. So you might have also noticed that in a battery, have you seen a battery? Do you know the positive and negative terminal? Can you identify? Yes, Dhruvin, can you tell me? Yes. How will you identify? Yeah, it has two terminals, okay. There is a shape, structure is there, one bottom part, okay, and one metallic yes. knob cap part. Uh -huh. Yes. So the cap part is positive terminal, yes, very good. And the bottom part is negative terminal. Okay, fine. Okay, so can you tell me what do you know about a closed circuit or an open circuit? Any idea? Yes, metal disc at the bottom, which is negative. Correct. Can you tell me about closed or open circuit? Any idea? Anyone? Have you heard of these terms? Closed circuit, open circuit? No? Ha, huh, when switches? Switch is closed means, uh, what do you mean by that? It is a circuit in which current can flow. Very good. Very good, Aviraj. So closed circuit means it's a complete circuit. The switch is in on position, actually. In closed circuit, the switch is in on position and the current flows, the bulb glows. While in open circuit, what happens? Opposite happens, right? In open circuit, we have switch in off position. The circuit is incomplete or the circuit is open. So the current does not flow. And we can see the bulb which is connected in an open circuit will not flow. Right? Yes. Yes, current flows. Correct. Now electric bulb. This is a device which you have seen at your homes, right? Okay. Yes, Ritraj, you are correct. Closed circuit allow the current to flow, whereas open circuit does not allow. Okay. Okay, Ritraj, can you tell me about electric bulb? Already the definition is given here. It's a device. Okay, filament it has. Okay, first of all, the definition is it's a device which produces light. That means it has the capacity to convert electrical energy into light energy as well as heat energy. Yes, made of tungsten. Very good, Bhadra Bijunai. Okay, so what is this is the basic structure or the image of a bulb which consists of two thick wires at the two sides which will be the two terminals positive and negative. And in the center, we have a very thin filament. So filament is made up of a metal known as tungsten. As already Bhadra Biju has said, it is a made up of a metal known as tungsten. Okay, what is the speciality of this metal? Can anyone explain why this only tungsten is used in the filament or why tungsten filament is made up of only tungsten? Yes, it has a very high melting point. Very good. Very good, very good. So tungsten has a high melting point. So when you apply current or when you switch on the bulb, definitely current will flow through the wires and it will reach the filament, right? Now, if the filament's melting point is very low, do you, do you have any idea if current flows through a device, it will get heated up? Yes. Yes. Yes, heating effect of electric current. So whenever current flows through a device, it will get heated up. So filament, if filament is made up of a metal, which has a very low melting point due to heating up, it will melt and it will break the circuit, right? So we have, yes, it will work like a fuse. Wire. Very good, Aviraj. So we have to use a filament of a metal, which is a high melting point. That is why we are using tungsten. Now there are two to three specialities of tungsten. One, it is very high melting point. One thing is it converts most of the electrical energy into light. So when it glows, it emits heat along with light. So it serves two purpose. One thing, the bulb gets heated up, but along with the heating up of the bulb, it emits light. And third thing is it doesn't react with any uh, oxygen or any other uh, materials present. So that is why it is filled with some inert gases. 
okay so that is why mainly tungsten is used in the bulb so that is a speciality of tungsten so you have to remember two things one is uh, it has a very high melting point it conducts electricity and it converts the electricity into heat energy and light energy so while getting heated up itself yes argon neon they are all inert gases very good so when they heated up they uh, what they get they uh, emit light in the form of energy so that is the speciality of okay nitrogen nitrogen does not come in inert gases but nitrogen gas is also filled in the electric bulb okay argon neon they are come in inert gases okay rituraj you are correct okay so that is the basic information about electric bulb okay now this is something which i, I have already asked we have an open circuit and an closed circuit so this difference is very important open circuit means current is not able to flow no current flows because it's open it's incomplete and switch will be in off position okay and in closed circuit the current will flow the switch will be in on position so this is the basic difference which you must definitely remember in closed circuit switch is in on position and in open circuit switch is in off position clear so see here the bulb glows the bulb glows because which is in on position and if the switch was in off position then the bulb does not glow right yes okay any doubt in this slide no okay fine no okay fine yes let us move on to the next slide okay so these are certain symbols of certain components which we are using electric circuit now it is not possible to every time draw a switch draw a bulb okay so we have some symbols which we are using like battery and all it's not possible to draw every time right so wire simply with the help of a sim same line we are drawing the wires cell or battery cell will be represented like this one is a higher line longer line which shows higher terminal or positive terminal and shorter line will be the negative terminal right and combination of cells when you connect two or more cells together then it forms a battery so a group of cells will form a battery now symbol of key see here open key where the connection is having a breakage so current will not flow and here closed key the circuit is complete or closed circuit right ammeter ammeter is a device or an instrument which is used to measure the current clear so these are the symbols which we are using because it's not possible to every time draw the cell or battery or switch so these symbols can be used while you are drawing the circuit diagram and all clear okay okay fine so um now we will move on to the question and answer session okay so uh, i have just selected some of the slides actually not all the topics i have covered but in our actual class we'll be covering almost all the topics okay uh, i just took out the important ones and some questions i have added like this previous year questions we'll be discussing after the session okay so read the question and just tell me what is the answer okay dhruvin can you read the question jack connected a simple electric circuit using material w x y and z with different combinations he records the result as shown below okay so there are different combinations of materials like okay okay before i begin the question or before we go on to solving the question uh, can you tell me what are the different types of materials like conductors insulators have you discussed or have you learned about that okay rituraj has already given the answer okay yes dhruvin or rituraj can you tell me what do you know about conductors and insulators anyone yes aviraj you can tell um are you muted or maybe you have to check unmute yourself okay insulator allow current to pass insulator does not allow current to pass rituraj i want to correct yes aviraj you can answer
Dhruvin, can you answer conductors and insulators? Any idea? Okay, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. No idea. Okay, conductors are those substances which allow the electric current to pass. Okay, what Rituraj said, ha, ha. What what Rituraj said, uh, first insulator, not conductor allow current to pass. For example, metals. Okay, if you have a metallic wire, it will allow the current to pass. Even our body. our body also allow the current to pass so we are also conductors right but if you have a wood wooden spoon or uh, wooden materials or object or plastic if you have that is an insulator it will not allow current to pass yes okay okay yes okay yes m in mg okay who is this mg you unmute yourself and please reply Ma'am, my name is Manya, and conductors are good. Means they are good. They electricity can pass through them, and insulators are not good conductor of electricity. Okay, fine. Yes, conductors are good conductors. Good uh, conductors are those materials which allow the electric current to pass through them. For example, metals are very good conductors, right? And insulators are those materials which do not allow electricity to pass through them. Clear? So now we have here uh, four uh, different. uh circuits x and y we don't know the material they did not tell the material but when x and y is connected here the current does not flow the bulb does not glow that means either both x and y is conductor no insulator or either x or y is a insulator so any one either is a insulator or maybe both of them are insulator right now when w and x is connected then the bulb lights up what does that mean that x is a conductor right both are conductor ha huh, so we can write x is a conductor and even w is a conductor because when they are connected the bulb is lighting up so z is an insulator so i will make two column here right one is column for conductor c for conductor and one is the column for insulator clear okay now uh, x and w i have kept in the conductor column right okay now what about y and z y and z can anyone tell me the bulb does not glow up do we can y is insulator and z is uh, conductor z we don't know right we are not sure whether z is a conductor or not so y is definitely a insulator because in the first combination also y does not bulb light up and then the third combination also not so when you get to the fourth combination that is w and z okay so what is happening the bulb lights up right okay so definitely w and z is also a conductor so only one material is insulator which is that material y so which is the correct option or which materials are electrical conductors d d w w x and z that is option d is the correct answer okay so this is how you have to solve for that first basically your idea of conductivity should be clear right you should know what are conductors what are insulators so as i told you conductors are the materials which allow electric current to pass through them okay and only when electric current passes the bulb lights up right yes okay and what about insulators dhruvin can you define they or uh, does not pass the electricity through them ha huh. they do not allow the electricity to pass through them so metals all the metals are examples of good conductors even uh, tap water is a good conductor but a distilled water is a someone replied that no someone typed that in chat box who was that okay i don't remember the name okay so distilled water pure water is a insulator yes does not allow it's not light aviraj it's a, ha conductors and insulators will not come in light actually light that is different transparent translucent opaque right aviraj ha opaque are those substances which do not allow light to pass through them translucent are those substances okay fine 
no problem no problem anyway light and shadows we'll be doing here as well so during that time we will discuss so here we are discussing about the materials of two types conductors and insulators clear okay fine so any doubt in this question conductors and insulators example is also clear to you no yes this yes. question can be asked in multiple ways maybe instead of the column they can give a diagram in which the bulb is glowing uh -huh. okay why distilled water is a insulator okay yes uh, mg i will tell you that uh, insulator is a device or is a material which does not allow the current to pass but conductors are those which allow now in distilled water what is absent is distilled water is very pure okay and for electricity to pass it should have some impurities the presence of either salt the presence of either acid or base have we learnt about acid and base okay acid is like vinegar and all they come in acidic right basic soap soap solution and all come in basic so if you mix either acid base or any salt like sodium chloride the common salt which we are using at home if you mix that in pure water only that can conduct electricity okay because to conduct electricity the the um, particle should move and in pure water they are not no particles at all only water is there pure water so impurity should be there presence of free ions should be there that you will study in higher classes okay so just remember one thing pure water does not contain any impurities any free ions and that is why it does not conduct electricity okay while in tap water tap water is not pure it contains salt it contains some presence of some acidic or basic components some impurities that is why it becomes conductive clear sugar water yes of course sugar water can conduct electricity because it contains the presence of sugar in it any impurities added can conduct electricity okay okay any other doubts okay okay so let us move on to the next question fine this is a diagram of an electric circuit as you can see here we have uh, x y and z the switch arm and a bulb and a wire and a batteries in box okay so after the circuit is connected the bulb did not glow up okay what will be the reason or what should travis do to make the bulb light up and why can you tell me what will be the reason the bulb does not glow anyone so there can be many reasons right manya ma'am maybe we can change the wire connected to the battery means we can connect instead of y we can connect it into z yes you are correct manya so see here actually the connection is x with the bulb and the bulb with the battery and the wire is connected with y right so here there is a breakage from x to y there is no current flowing so this switch if you can put it over here or you can just switch the arm to x instead of z then the circuit will be closed circuit and the current will flow right did you get the idea there can be many possible reasons right the bulb may be faulty the batteries may not be working the wires may not be conducting but they did not say that anything is having any fault or something okay so what we can do we can just check by connecting the switch to the arm x x and y if we complete the connection there x and y the circuit will be complete and we know a complete circuit is acting like a closed circuit through which current flows okay yeah that is also correct yes aviraj what you have said that is also correct but the correct option is option d this switch arm you have to connect it to x okay uh circuit not completed or bulb is fused or why yes we can see that also 
but they have not said anything in that no information such regarding such is given to us no so what directly we can switch the arm that will be more uh, convenient option for us so the convenient one we will select okay option d because we can take that switch arm and connect it with x and we can see if still it is not working then we will give the other option like um, change the connection or check whether the connections are loose or not or check whether the bulb is faulty or after that first make the connection with x and check whether bulb is glowing or not okay badra biju is it clear abiraj is it clear dhruvin what about you yes, yes. Manya, you understood, no? Okay. Rituraj, what about you? Yes, ma'am. So our first convenient option or our first task will be to connect the switch arm from Z to X. Okay. And then we will see if the bulb glows or not. If the bulb still doesn't glow, then we will check if the bulb is faulty or the wires are loose or we will re restock or change, replace the batteries. Right? That will be our subsequent options, not the first one. Clear? Yes. Okay, fine. So let me go on to the next question. Okay. Yes. So Frank created a circuit tester. Any idea about testers? Have you learned about tester? Yes. Okay. Who will say? The definition, yes, Rituraj. Yes, anyone you can type in the chat box as well. B. Okay, no, what about the option I am asking, Aviraj? Can you tell me what is a tester? Can you tell me? Okay, I'll tell you. Manya, any idea about the tester? Yeah, ma'am. It can be used to check electricity or voltage. How much very good. Is very present. good, man. Very good. So, tester is a device to check whether electric current is flowing or not. Yes. No, it will not tell, uh, huh, conductor and insulator also it can tell. And it's a device, it will check the electric current, right? So a bulb can be a tester, Aviraj, right? If the bulb glows, then definitely it's a conductor and electric current is flowing. If the bulb does not glow, then we can know that it is an insulator, right? Yes, you are correct. So Frank wanted to create a circuit tester, actually. He wanted to test conductivity of materials. Now he has these two points, S and T, and he will connect it to specific materials, which he want to test, whether insulator or conductor. But the teacher said that this circuit tester will not work. So what can Frank do to make sure that his circuit tester will allow him to know if the material he is testing is a conductor or not? So he has a cell here, okay, and a wire. Yes, Manya? Ma'am, he can add a LED or a switch so that some indication will be there. Okay. Adding a switch will not be an indicator, right? Yeah, what you said, LED. adding a LED or a bulb is correct, Manya. So adding a bulb or LED, suppose I have a bulb here. Okay, this is a symbol of bulb I will draw. So if I add a LED or a bulb here and if I connect S and T to some conductor or insulator, then I can test if the bulb glows, the material is a... What is that material? Conductor or not? Ah, conductor, very good. And if the bulb does not glow, the material is? A insulator. Very good, Manya. So that is what he can do. So he can just change the circuit tester and he can just put a... Uh, what what do we say? A LED bulb. Any other tester is in your mind? Any other tester? Motor. motor. Okay, motor. Ma'am, we can means in hospitals they can use for blood test and all. What do they use? Ma'am, they, they actually they use injection, ma'am, but 
They okay. can use some means microscope. They use some. No, test. that is not what I am asking. Other than bulb, one more thing you can use here to test conductivity is magnetic compass. Have you seen a magnetic compass or a magnetic needle? Compass or a needle, which yeah. shows direction. Yeah, mama. Ha, that can also be used as a tester here because if you connect a magnetic compass, it will show deflection when the current passes. Whenever you conduct it, whenever you connect it with a conductor, it will show a deflection. So, other than bulb or LED, you can use a uh, magnetic compass or a needle here. Okay. Mama, buzzer. Buzzer. Ah, buzzer also you can use. Okay. So it produces some sound if the current is flowing. Okay, fine. Any doubt in this question? No matter. Battery. Metal. Okay, Aviraj, you are saying option number B for this answer. Are you saying about a switch, Aviraj? Okay, adding a switch will not. Uh, switch addition will help him uh, for opening and closing the circuit but that will not complete the circuit okay even if switch is not there but bulb is there he can definitely test the conductivity okay aviraj so addition of a switch is only needed when he wants to off the circuit but here the his actual motive is to test the conductivity so for testing the conductivity he needs a device called as tester so option B is not correct here. Option A is the correct one. Okay, Aviraj. Okay, switch he can use when he wants to close the circuit or when he wants alternate closing and opening of the circuit. Aviraj, please reply whether you understood or not or shall I repeat? Anyone else? Did you understand why I am give, uh, I have said the option A as correct? Manya, okay. Children, you have to be very attentive and responsive, okay? Only then I will understand. Anyway, this is an online class, right? So I have my own limitations, right? So the only way of communicating with you is either through your responses or through the chat box, right? So you have to be very active, like how you are in class when the teacher teaches continuously, you will be answering them, no, in the same manner. So this, this is not a class, actually, this is, there should be a interaction, a two way communication between us. Only then I will understand that whether you are being able to grasp what I'm teaching or not. Okay. So every time you want to answer, you can just raise your hand or yes or no, you can simply type in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and reply with a yes or no. Okay, otherwise I would feel like all of you are sleeping in the class. Is it so boring? No, no. Okay, so you have to be continuously responding to me. Okay. Fine, so shall I move on to the next question? Is this uh, thing, uh, did you understand actually or shall I repeat? Yes, Rituraj. Understood, ma'am. Ah, okay. So, tester is a device which can be used to test whether the current is flowing through the electrical circuit or not. And it can be, as I said, a buzzer or a LED or a simple bulb or a magnetic compass, which shows a change. So, a bulb or a LED will glow when current passes. So, we can test whether the material is conductive or not. Okay. So, here adding a bulb will help Frank. Addition of switch alone will not help him. Of course, switch is also needed if he wants to uh, open the circuit or close the circuit. But here actually the teacher wants him to add a bulb because bulb is that device which will show the indication, right? So option number A is the correct answer. Clear? Add a bulb. So when he adds a bulb, he can test whether the material is conductive or not. Fine. So let us move on to the next session. Okay, next slide. Okay. Which of the following statements about the circuit is correct? Now, uh, this is the, these are the symbols of bulb, okay? Mm, I'll tell you. 
this you can see here these are the symbols of bulb l2 l1 l3 and these are the switches s1 s2 s3 this is a cell clear okay and now you have to select which of the following statement is correct now first statement says that lamp l1 this is the lamp l1 it will light up when either l2 or l3 are lighted can you say this statement is correct or incorrect they are saying l1 will light up if either l2 or l3 is lighted yes correct yes either i close this switch s2 then also current will flow and will reach l1 right or if i close this s3 then also current will flow and reach this l1 so l1 will glow if you uh, light l2 and l3 so anyone if lighted up l1 will also glow so first statement is correct what about the second statement electricity will flow only when all the switches are closed no, not yes dhruvi not correct it's not necessary right electricity if only s2 i am glowing then also electricity flows maybe l3 will not glow up but l2 and l1 will glow up if i close uh, s3 then also it can glow right so there is no such condition like electricity will flow only when all switches are closed if any one switch is closed then also electricity can flow so option number b is a incorrect one okay what about option number c current flowing through l1 and l2 are equal can you tell me whether current flowing through l1 and l2 are equal yes ma'am no. okay actually that is not equal why i will tell you okay suppose from this battery current starts flowing right so here if current comes the current will be i current right yes okay now from here the current is being divided in two different parts one is through l2 one is through l3 the current will divide itself if both the bulbs have same voltage then equal current will be there if one bulb is having greater voltage then greater current will flow so the current i divides itself as i1 and i2 here okay but when it comes out of this circuit again it will be the sum of both current i so that current i is flowing through l1 so l1 i current will flow but through l2 a low current will flow so it is not equal the reason here is because there is a division of current here at this point since total current i when it reaches this point it is going from two different directions right so the yes. total current is dividing itself but again when it joins back at this position outside the uh, l2 and l3 again it combines and forms the total current so l1 is having the total current i but in l2 and l3 there is a less amount of current flowing so the current flowing through the bulbs are not equal it depends on the bulbs arrangement it depends on the voltage of the bulb so you cannot say the current flowing through the bulbs are equal so that is a incorrect statement okay is it clear yes okay. yes ma'am okay tell me about option d electricity will flow as long as any one switch is closed so in the d statement the only difference is they are saying if any one switch is closed then also the current will flow do you agree with this statement <laughs> yes ma'am okay yes what about if i close only s1 will the current flow yes ma'am how yes ma'am how see this is the battery right the current starts coming from flowing from here right it will come and reach here what about s2 and s3 s2 and s3 are open so current starts from positive terminal 
it reaches S2 and S3, but here the switches are open, only S1 is closed. How will it complete the circuit? Yes. Right? So you have to check for electricity to flow, the circuit should be complete. So check always from the positive terminal. As I have told you, conventional direction of current and actual direction. Conventional direction of current is from positive to negative. That is from positive terminal to negative. And actual direction of electrons is from negative to positive, right? So for circuit to be complete, it starts from positive terminal, then it divides here, but S2 and S3 are open. They are saying only one switch is closed. So if only S1 I am closing, S2 and S3 are open, they will not allow the current to flow. So the circuit is not complete, right? The, the current is not reaching to L2, to L3 or L1, then how will they glow? electricity will not flow. So all these options are incorrect. Only option A is correct. That is L1 will light up when either L2 or L3 are lighted. Okay. And if you see about the charges electrons, see from electrons will start from here. It will go to here and here. Again, switch is closed. It will go from here also. But what about here? Here the switch is open. They will not be able to go. So how will they conduct electricity? Right? They will not be able to conduct electricity. So always check from positive terminal of the battery whether the circuit is complete. And only through a complete circuit, closed circuit, electric current will flow. Is it clear? Yes. Any doubt? Okay, so only one statement is correct. That is L1 will light up when either L2 and L3 are lighted. So that is the only correct statement, okay? Fine. Shall we move on to the next question? Okay. Tell me about this one. Study the circuit below. So there are two batteries, okay? Then we have bulb A, B, C, and D, okay. These are four bulbs, fine. Which bulb, if fused, will result in other two bulbs lighting up in the circuit? Even if one bulb is fused, okay, the other two bulbs will light up in the circuit, they are saying. Can you tell me? So if A and C are fused, then definitely if A is fused and C is fused, definitely D will not glow, right? B will also yes. not glow. So option number A is incorrect. If A and C both are fused, current will not flow through it because C is fused and current will not flow through this. So D will also not glow. So option A is wrong. Let us check about option number B. B only. If only B is fused. So B is fused means current will not flow to this side, but current can flow through A, right? And then current can reach through C, D, and current can complete the circuit. Is it a complete circuit? Yes. Yes, it is a positive terminal and it is a negative terminal here. So from here, the current completes its circuit. Even if bulb B is fused, A to C and then C to D and then to the negative terminal of the battery, the circuit is complete. So option number B is correct option. So this is how you have to check. You have to imagine yourself that this is the, or with pencil, you can mark the direction and check or in my, like mental calculations and all we do no? in the same manner you can imagine okay b is fused imagine then where, where is the direction of current flow is there or not from a to c and then to b okay now let us see the other three options also c only so if c is fused okay if c is fused then definitely if current starts from here 
current is not able to go to towards d terminal right that means no bulb will glow up because the circuit is not complete and if d is fused then also circuit is not complete so only option b is correct if you fuse this bulb only then the circuit is complete so this bulb even if fused the current can flow through a and then towards c and c to d and d to the negative terminal of the battery so this is the only case in which the circuit is complete a closed circuit so only in a closed circuit the current will flow so option number b is the correct answer any doubt anyone did you understand okay yeah. so let us solve one more question and this one you will have to answer i will just read the question look at the circuit given below so three bulbs b1 b2 b3 and b4 are there one of the bulb is not working and the three bulbs will not light up so you have to say which is the bulb tell me the answer now this is same question as the previous one you guess and tell me the answer d option number d who said that dhruvin okay dhruvin okay. so dhruvin has said option number d uh, what about others do you agree with this option or do you have any other answer when one of the bulb is not working the other three bulbs will not light up any other yes bhadra biju b4 yes b you are saying option b b4 yes rituraj do you want to try which option you want to say b4 B four. So Ritaraj also agrees with option B four. Can you tell me why? For example, this B four is not working. Then what happens from positive terminal? It will reach to B one. It will reach to B three. But when it comes to B four, there is a breakage over here. So the circuit is open circuit. The circuit is not closed. So if B four is not working, all the three bulbs also will not light up. right because the circuit is not complete b4 is the connection which has with negative terminal so if b4 is not working they will also not glow right if b3 is not working then what happens b2 and b1 will complete the circuit with b4 and they will light up right similarly if b2 is not working then b3 and b4 will complete the circuit and will light up right if b1 is not working then also b3 to b4 to negative terminal it will light up so the only option is option number d that is b4 if you don't uh use this b4 or if this bulb is not working then definitely other three bulbs also will not glow because the current will reach up to b3 okay but from b4 it may not pass because it is fused and if it doesn't pass it cannot reach the terminal of the battery so the circuit is open circuit and the bulb does not glow clear yes ma'am okay. So, any doubt in this session? No, no. Okay, fine. Anyone is having doubt in any of the questions? Okay. So, I have shared with you. Okay. Yes. So, this is how the our sessions will be like. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the wonderful session. So, students, how was the session? Do you like it? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now, ma'am, we'll meet you in the live classes. Okay, so thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful session, and thank you, students, for joining. Now we will meet in the live classes. Live classes we are going to start from second of January. Okay, so thank you, everyone, for today, and good night. Bye.